Hi everyone, I hope you're really well. Welcome or indeed welcome back to the channel. If you are new, don't forget to hit subscribe because today I am giving you guys an update on how I've been getting on testing and experimenting with the new Estee Lauder Nude Foundation. Yes, it is that time again. It was a good few weeks ago that I did my first impressions review of Estee Lauder's new nude foundation. So if you want to see application and my first impressions and all that kind of stuff, just basically a ton of information, then definitely check that video out. If you've already seen that video, then welcome to part two. This is where I have put the foundation well and truly through its paces and I use different primers, setting powders, moisturizers as well because yes that can make a big difference sometimes. So I've experimented around with it quite a lot and I feel like I've got to the point now where I'm ready to tell you guys what I think of this foundation and ultimately would I actually get it again? So in terms of what I'll be covering in this second video, we're gonna have a quick overview in terms of the foundation, just so that we can jog our memory, just so I'm making sure I'm getting my facts right as well. When it comes to actually assessing this foundation, it's only fair to assess it against the claims that they make about it, obviously. I'll also be going through swatches as well, just so that you can see how the foundations compare in terms of what I was matched with against other foundations that I regularly wear. I'll then talk you through the testing phase, so how I got on using various different products, either primers or powders or moisturisers, and how the foundation performed with those products. And then finally it will be my final conclusion and I'll talk about my personal pros and cons for this foundation and ultimately would I actually get it again. So first things first, let's just have a quick recap of the basics of this foundation. It costs £32.50 for a standard 30ml, so it's not the most expensive foundation in the world. So in Estee Lauder terms, it's a pretty bog standard price for a foundation of theirs, but in broader terms, it is obviously on the more higher end of things. It has a fantastic SPF of 30. There are 33 shades in the UK, and as far as I can work out, there's only 12 shades in the US. Now, this is not something I've usually dug into much information before, because before I did foundation reviews I just used to go by the UK website and I didn't really feel the need to stray and look anywhere else. But now that I've started to do foundation reviews, the more digging I've done, the more I've realised that actually foundations do differ quite a bit from country to country. Now I'm going to go out on a limb here and I'm going to assume that this is something to do with skin tones within that country's culture. That's the only thing I can come up with because if you start looking at different websites and you've got estelauder.co.uk which has obviously got the 33 shades and most of them do run quite light and then if you were to look on estelauder.com that's where you would see just 12 shades and there's definitely a difference in terms of the skin tones that are being covered there so the only thing that I can think of is they're looking at the direct market that they're selling in and obviously they're selling the shades that actually are appropriate to that market, but it's something I wasn't aware of before and I found it really quite interesting. Also, in terms of the basics, it's supposed to give light to medium coverage, it gives a real skin or satin finish, and it's suitable for all skin types. So now if we move on to the claims, it's supposed to give a real skin flawless finish, it has 24 hour staying power, it's water light, which means it will look fresh, natural and healthy, and it instantly and continuously hydrates throughout the day. It's also supposed to be oil controlling, which wasn't actually on the .co.uk website, but it does say that on the .com website, so that was interesting. And it's also supposed to be non-acnogenic, so it won't clog pores. So just to quickly go through some of that, and I'll let you know what I think against each of those things. In terms of the fact that it offers light to medium coverage, I would definitely agree with that. It gives a really nice level of medium coverage, quite quite easily, you don't have to build it up too much. You definitely can't get anything more than medium, but then again, it doesn't really promise to do that. So if you do have a lot of stuff
stuff to cover up, then this probably isn't going to be the foundation for you. But if you're looking to just even out your skin tone and maybe cover up a few minor blemishes, then you'll be surprised actually that the medium level of coverage is very flattering and I can certainly get away with it and walk out the door and feel quite confident. And it's not that I usually go for a full coverage foundation, but I usually prefer the confidence that a full coverage foundation gives me. So if you have similar skin to me in terms of stuff you want covering up, then it does definitely even everything out. Just don't go expecting anything completely flawless that's going to annihilate everything. In terms of the finish, it says it's a real skin or satin finish. I guess it probably is, although on my particular type of skin, which does lean quite oily, it can look dewy really quickly and we're talking pretty much straight away really as soon as it's gone on regardless of what primer I've put on underneath it will look quite dewy so because of that I have to powder every single time without fail otherwise I'm going to be going around with a very glowy face. Now I know some people love the look of that and it looks very healthy and natural and it does actually look quite nice but for me being an oily skinned girl it just makes me quite paranoid so I like to flatten things just a little bit. So yeah it probably does give you that look of real skin because it still leaves you with quite a bit of luminescence and healthy look to the skin which actually makes your skin look really fresh and vibrant. In terms of the claim that it will give 24 hour staying power I'm not sure why they do this because I don't know who would actually wear their makeup in reality for 24 hours because you've got to sleep at some point in 24 hours, I'm sure everyone does. But that being said, it does definitely do a good 12 hour plus shift, just like you would expect from Estee Lauder. They are really good when it comes to long wearing and good performing foundations. So if you're after something that looks quite natural, quite fresh, gives you a bit of a dewiness, and it's actually going to last throughout the day as well, then this is a fantastic choice to put your money on. Next, they talked about the fact that the foundation was very water light, so what their interpretation of that was, was obviously you wouldn't get any heavy makeup feel on your face, and therefore it would feel like you had absolutely nothing on. It would move very comfortably with the skin and look fresh, natural, and healthy, and even toned. So in terms of it being water light, I would definitely agree with this claim. It feels unbelievably comfortable. I do actually have it on my face today, I do still have quite a lot of the samples left that they gave me and it does just feel really comfortable like you've got nothing on your skin. Even when my oils start to come through you don't kind of get that heavy horrible feeling, it still remains comfortable. And in terms of it moving with my skin I think what they mean by that is if you had any dryness or cracks or anything it doesn't crumble, it doesn't cling to any texture issues and it just feels really comfortable to wear all day. I do suffer with some rather annoying texture issues on my skin, particularly just up here on my forehead. I also suffer with quite significant dryness and poor skin around my chin area and it doesn't cling to any of that and it feels really comfortable and like they say, like I've got nothing on at all. So I would definitely agree with that. It's also supposed to instantly and continuously hydrate the skin due to some kind of complicated fruit complex thing. And I would also agree with that as well. It's got quite a cooling feeling when you put it on the skin and that feeling kind of follows you throughout the day as well. It gives you that kind of fresh skin feeling, which also just goes to make it continue to feel really, really comfortable. So I would definitely go along with that instant hydration and continuous hydration feeling. They also said it was oil controlling, and I personally have not experienced that at all. I don't know if they mean for just a more normal kind of response to oil in a normal skinned person, because I am really quite oily, unfortunately. But yeah, it does not control oil at all. So if you've got oily skin like I have, you're gonna have to tread 
quite carefully when it comes to what you're going to layer in and around this but I will save talking about that until we start talking about the experimentation part of this because I do have some photos that I'd like to show you. And then lastly they said the formula was non-acnogenic so it wouldn't clog your pores and in all the time that I've been using this it's not given me any breakouts at all so so far I would go along with that claim too. In terms of the colour match experience I had with Estee Lauder, if you remember from the first impressions video, I went to two different Estee Lauder counters and I was matched in different shades at both counters, which was interesting. The shades that they matched me in was 3N1 Ivory Beige and 2C2 Pale Almond. And as you can see here from the swatches that I've done, 3N1 is unbelievably dark. It's by far the darkest thing that is on my arm there with those swatches. Even the one below it, the Pale Almond, is pretty dark. But actually, when it's blended into my skin, that one's, if anything, a little bit too light. So if I mix those two together, it's a pretty good match for me. As for what on earth shade that would mean that I need if I was to go out and buy this again, I've got no idea so I'd have to do some serious thinking because Ivory Beige is definitely a shade or two too deep for me and Pale Almond is definitely a good shade too light for me but I can just about get away with them on their own if I don't mix them but if I mix them together it's actually a really good match and that's what I've got on my face today it's a mixture of the two. If you recall as well from my first impressions video when I went to one of the Estee Lauder counters they said that because it blends so well into the skin and it is so watery you're actually best to go a whole shade number down to what you would be normally because normally in Estee Lauder I'm a one something and she actually matched me with a three so that was interesting the other lady matched me with a two so maybe something for me in the two family probably would have been a better match so on to the testing part of this update as you may well know I have many things to play with when it comes to trying to make foundation work for me and in the most part the main main issue that I've experienced with this foundation is the level of glow, which unfortunately feels like it's a problem that I always seem to have. So I was pretty well armed when it came to primers to try out, because I do have quite a few. I've bought three along with me that I did try with this foundation. The one that I'm actually using today is this one from Hourglass, and it's their Mineral Veil Primer. This is a beautiful primer, but it does not work with this foundation so I don't know if there is something in the ingredients that's making them react with one another but it's what I've got on today and my face is super glowy so that one was no good. The next one I've got is this one and it's Hylamide Matte 12 and unfortunately I didn't have much luck with this one either. It just did not control the oil situation and I ended up quite glowy. Not quite as glowy as I did with the Mineral Veil but still glowy to the point where it made me feel a bit uncomfortable. Quite new to my primer stash is this one from Hylamide and it's their HA Blur. I actually really like this primer and I like it particularly under my L'Oreal Infallible Matte. That's a lovely combination. But in terms of Estee Lauder Nude, again, it was another one that just didn't perform in the way that I wanted to. The glowy power of Estee Lauder Nude was just, again, too much. Another one that I tried, and again, this is quite a recent addition to my primer family, is this one from Clarins, and this is the Instant Smooth Perfecting Touch. You guys will have seen me use this quite recently in my Get Ready With Me video, and oh my goodness, this primer is fabulous. I'm actually considering getting the full size, but I picked these samples up from Foo Unique's Pick and Mix service and they very generously gave me five. And when I was editing my Get Ready With Me video, I was actually shocked at how generous that little sample bundle was because I think it was like half the full size in samples that I had. So hopefully it will last me a little while, but this primer I am so impressed with and it's gorgeous underneath most things. Not quite gorgeous underneath Estee Lauder Nude. I think you can sense a little bit of a theme going on here that basically primers were just not working for me with this foundation. I also tried a few different moisturisers just to see if that would make a difference and unfortunately it didn't either. So I started to lose a bit of hope and I just thought it's just going to get relegated. I'm just not going to use these samples up until... 
I used this stuff. And oh my goodness, there should be angels singing right now because of how unbelievably good this powder is. This powder is so amazing. I think I'm probably going to pick another one up in the translucent, same as this, and include it in my 2000 subscriber giveaway because Oh, you guys, you need this powder in your life. I'm probably preempting my next best and worst of beauty video, but oh my goodness, this stuff is amazing. It's absolutely amazing. This is the Coty Airspun powder. And like I said, this is the translucent one. You get an absolute ton of product in here. It's 65 grams. And I think I picked this up for about 11.99. And it's amazing. This stuff, on top of this foundation is a dream. It looks absolutely beautiful. It flattens everything down just enough so that it still looks like beautiful, beautiful skin, but it controls the oil. And boy, does it control the oil well. So if you've got oily skin, and I know that this video isn't actually about this powder, but as I'm talking about it, you need this in your life. It's amazing. So thanks to that powder, all is not lost with this foundation and I will happily use it up until the samples have actually run out. And I do actually have a really decent amount of product left because is this like 10 mil in here? Is that the size that they do for these samples? I think they say it's usually like 10 days wear, but there's absolutely loads left, which I am kind of surprised at because something else I really feel like I need to point out as well is the application technique for this. It's quite tricky. Because it's so watery, and you may well remember what they advised me to do is just to pop my finger on the end, go upside down, and then kind of dot that around my face and I may as well swatch it. My personal technique that I like to use is I literally pour some on the sponge and I bounce it over my face and I build it up and build it up and build it up. The only problem with that is because of how watery it is, I've actually got a load of it splashed all over my t-shirt, which unfortunately is not ideal. So that's just something to be aware of. If you do get this foundation, it can be a bit tricky to apply because of how watery it is and you can make a bit of a mess of yourself without even realizing it, but it does blend really beautifully. So. I kind of forgive it a little bit. In conclusion, I would definitely pick this foundation up again. I think it's actually really beautiful and it really complements the fact that the other foundation I really like to wear is L'Oreal Infallible Matte. So it would sit actually really happily within my foundation routine in terms of what foundations I would pick up dependent on what the weather's doing and what kind of level of coverage foundation I want to be wearing that day. So I would be really happy to pick this one up again but let's just say it is only because of finding the Coty Airspun and it actually working so well. So that's something else to consider if you've got oily skin. Chances are you won't be able to get away with using this foundation on its own. So that's it for today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and found this update helpful if this is a foundation that you're considering for yourself. If you did find it useful, I would really appreciate a thumbs up down below because it does really help support my channel. And if you are new and would like to subscribe to see more content like this from me in the future, I will pop a button just here so you can click it and just get notified of new content as and when it gets uploaded. And if you've not seen my last video, I will pop a link to that one just up here so you can click it and check that one out too. Anyway, I hope you're all really well and I will see you again soon. Bye!